So it seems a little bit counterintuitive. I mean, last year around spring and towards the fall when we had Treasury yields rising, we actually had emerging market currencies under pressure. What's different this time? Well, I think clearly this time the major difference is going to be the growth picture. So uh, if we look at the likes of emerging market Asia, uh, we, we probably saw a big dip in the economies and that already happened in 2020. Uh, but this time around in 2021, these economies are on a much stronger footing. So uh, if we look across the likes of EM Asia, we have central banks looking to hike rates. Uh, they, of course, they also have their own inflation problem, but we wouldn't be talking about rate hikes uh, if they were not a lot more confident about growth. So uh, from that aspect, yes, on one hand, you still have this picture where U.S. rates are going higher. Uh, there is a risk that that could draw flows away from EM Asia, but this is being countered by the Asian growth story. And of course, uh, we are sort of seeing a bit of a softening in the China economy right now, but we do believe that that is going to be offset to a certain extent by expectations of easing. So that does help risk sentiment somewhat. Does higher inflation, higher rates also necessarily equal stronger U.S. dollar? Uh, not necessarily in our view. So I think what, what is important right now is, yes, to a certain extent, uh, you have higher rates. But then what should really matter is basically not our real, real effective uh, real rates of, for the dollar. Um, so what we have seen compared to previous instances is previously real rates for the dollar were, uh, were not as low as they were today. So basically, the dollar is basically coming back from a much lower level. Um, so there is more room for that to come up before. In our view, that has even more of an impact on the dollar. And secondly, if we actually look at the performance of the dollar, we are starting at a much higher level compared to before. So what that does tell us is that a lot of good news is already priced into the dollar. And from that perspective, uh, we think it is certainly time to look elsewhere. It's not just about the dollar anymore. What do you see as being the, the catalyst in driving our recovery in the yuan in the second half? Well, for us, uh, we would say, firstly, the, the most important part is in the first half, uh, we are looking for a bit more CNY weakness, given that uh, we do believe the growth story is going to be a much bigger concern. We haven't seen that hit the data yet, but if we look at the economic surprise indices for China, uh, if we look at some of the underlying growth factors such as COVID, power disruptions, supply chain disruptions, these all still remain in place. So uh, from our view, we do see this gradually hitting into the economy into the first half. And what is very clear right now is the FX signal from authorities. And they are basically telling us they do not want the CNY to be very strong. So uh, from that perspective, we do believe the CNY will be weaker first in the first half. And that's why, basically, as the re economy recovers in the second half, uh, we do think that policy signal shift will kind of fade away. And therefore, from that sense, the CNY can then start to appreciate. Where do you see the outperformers in emerging markets Asia then, given that this time around the, the sort of dynamic between how they're expected to react after the Fed is somewhat different? Well, basically, if we look across EM Asia, we would be looking at economies which, as I mentioned, growth are stronger, uh, central banks have room to tighten, and, base, and of course, economies where we believe that they have a better job but they've done a better job of managing COVID. Uh, economy, which really does stand up for us, there is basically the Singapore dollar. And from that perspective, we think the market also agrees. If we look at the performance of the Sing, of the Sing near over the past few weeks, we've basically seen a rocketing up of the Sing near, uh, basically as uh, the Singapore dollar has advanced a lot faster relative to a lot of its EM Asian peers. Um, so that is basically a currency which we do like. We think even in periods of volatility, uh, the Singapore dollar benefits as a haven. So uh, that is one area which we do like. CNY, as I mentioned, we like probably a bit better in the second half relative to before. Um, and as you can see there, uh, one currency which we dislike, we think will probably be a bit more disadvantaged, uh, would be the Philippine peso, just given the growth story, you also have elections. And what we did see in the November trade numbers was, was the biggest trade deficit on record. So from an external perspective, we think that will continue to weigh on the PHP. And this is going to be a concern, especially given the Fed will probably be hiking a bit faster. 
when it comes to commodities linked to currencies, what do you see as the dynamic there, particularly in relation to as we continue to see this rise in oil prices as well? Well, I think uh, the oil dynamic is probably going to be a bit different this year relative to the previous years. Uh, one big driver of commodity prices last year, which is given we had such a lower base. But if you look at it this year, uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, oil prices are not going to be rising as quickly. Um, however, we do expect overall commodity prices to stay elevated. Uh, there will be a bit of uh, some volatility, just given that from the China perspective, we are still seeing a slowdown in growth, and that basically does crimp on some commodity demand. However, overall, uh, if we look across 2022, we do expect commodity price to be supported. For all commodity producers of that, like uh, probably a bit more softness in the early part of the year. Uh, in the second, in the second part of the year, we do expect to look a bit better. So, if you look across EM Asia, uh, the likes of Indonesia, a very big commodity producer, uh, we're actually looking for VI to hike twice this this year. So. Uh, it's going to be seeing two benefits. Firstly, the BI is going to be hiking to offset the Fed, uh, of course, also because its economy can undertake it. And also, just given as commodity prices stay elevated, we do expect the Indonesian economy to also benefit from this.